I was utterly terrified. It swallows you and engulfs you. You can feel all your bones and organs inside. Everything's rattling. Oh. All of a sudden, I was falling. And then I was thinking, this is really bad. The summits are always important, but there comes a point when you've got to say, enough's enough, don't do anything silly. Reluctantly, Ken opts to return to the relative safety of the trees. The plan was to get securely into the forest so I could dig a snow hole or set up my poncho. I didn't want to be exposed on the open slope and, you know, the trees offered some natural shelter. At night, the mountain will be even more treacherous. Ken needs to descend quickly and find level ground to camp. Again, the fire break offers the most direct route. But following it is a dangerous strategy. sudden there was just a noise from the top of a mountain. At first I thought it was something like an animal. It was so strange and unearthly, I'd never heard anything like it before. And then I realised that this is an avalanche. I was transfixed. I'd never seen an avalanche before. In a way, it was perverse. I just wanted to look at it. I should have turned and run, but it's just something so big and magnificent. But Ken has no time to lose. Each passing second brings him closer to death. I turn my back on it and run as fast into the forest as I could possibly make it. And all the time, I could feel like it was chasing me. My heart was beating. It was, it was just going crazy. It was going to hit me, bury me. I thought I was going to die. Ken dives to safety in the nick of time and the avalanche is funneled down the firebreak. It would have definitely killed me without a doubt. I was pretty shaken for a while. And then when I realised I was safe and I calmed down, then, then I just started to laugh. He's had a narrow escape, but he's still in danger. The snow on these upper slopes is unstable. After the avalanche, I began to feel really vulnerable on the slope. I need to find somewhere safe to sleep, someone to the drop down, get deeper into the forest, sleep for the night, and still possibly be able to make an ascent the next day. It's now a race to descend to safer ground before nightfall. But through the trees, the going quickly gets tough. But the terrain became more treacherous branches were poking in my eye. It was becoming a, a bit of a nightmare. The rough terrain and the slope of the mountain forces him back onto open ground. I knew the quickest passage was down the fire break between the trees. I didn't want to go anywhere near it again, but I had no choice. I had to go down it. But taking this shortcut is a serious gamble. In his race against the light, Ken decides it's a risk worth taking. But his luck has run out. The mountain is about to show him how lethal it can be. This time it's on him in an instant. It's run or die. I ran as fast and as frantic as I could. I was running for my life. 
and then the next thing I knew, it pulled me off my feet. I was utterly terrified. It swallows you and engulfs you. You can feel all your bones and organs inside. Everything's rattling. All of a sudden, I was falling. And then I was thinking, this is really bad. I landed on my ass and I heard, heard a, a massive crack. And uh, that was my pelvis shattering and the head of my femur snapping off. Of lost consciousness. I lay there, not not knowing what was happening uh, or where I was. I couldn't really feel anything. It was dark. Ah. The fall has inflicted a bloody gash to his head. But Ken is about to discover that his body has suffered a far more deadly blow. The pain finally hit me. It was an absolute agony. It was like a red hot poke was just being pushed into the side of my leg. The impact has broken his femur and smashed his hip joint through his pelvis, shattering it to pieces. Bone fragments have severed blood vessels around the pelvis, causing internal bleeding and making his core body temperature plummet. In this extreme environment, his injuries could prove fatal. Ken knows it's bad, but is unaware of the full extent of the damage. I sat up and started assessing my situation. As I put my hand to the side of my leg, my left hand felt wet and sticky, and I got a big open wound on the couple of inches on the side of my left hip. It was bleeding quite heavily. He needs to act quickly to prevent further loss of blood, which could harm his chances of survival. I managed to force myself to roll on my side. Pulled out our first field dressing from my pocket. And that seemed to stem a flow of blood. And after I dressed it, I pulled my trousers back up and, and I decided not to look at it again. My natural instinct was to get up and walk. My leg was in pain, but I wasn't sure if it was broken. I felt a jolt of agonizing pain shoot up my leg, and it became apparent that there was no way in hell I could walk. My, my leg was gone. It was a pretty desperate situation. 